So, Jeevan Muktaha. Jeevan Mukta. Jeevan Mukta means one who is free, one who is liberated while living. That is the literal translation of the of the word Jeevan Mukta. Mukta means free. Jeevan Mukta means free while living. And we have to say while living because this freedom, most religions, all religions, all other religions talk about freedom after death, correct? Moksha after death. So therefore, yeah. Jeevan Mukti is a very important phrase there. While living itself, you are free. That's the idea there. Why while living you are free? Well, because while living only one gains this knowledge. And that knowledge is gained, freedom is gained. Yeah? Ultimate goal is to be attaining the Jeevan Mukta, right? Goal of life is attaining the Jeevan Mukta. Is attaining Jeevan, Muk Jeevan Mukti, correct. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, so, one second. Yeah, so I saw a raised hand. Prasad Gurujala, go ahead. I am Krishna. I was trying to figure out what exactly is the meaning of Padam. Yeah, Padam means uh, <clears throat> Moksha. Padam is Moksha. So Moksha Padam. Padam has different meanings. In this context, it means Moksha. Moksha. Freedom. Liberation. We can translate it in many ways. But it's Moksha. Yeah? The moksha that is being unfolded by Krishna. Yeah, yeah. In in uh, in, the, in uh, if I look at the Telugu angle, moksha pada means worthy worthy of moksha. Yeah, depending on the context, worthy context. of moksha, and uh, so here, here what we say is, uh, we say moksha padam gachanti. He says attained, attains that. So, he's talking about the ultimate end. So, it's moksha here. Okay. Worthy of moksha is the karma yoga. Karma yoga makes one worthy of moksha. So, yeah, if you're referring to that, yeah, correct. Worthy of moksha. Karma yoga makes me worthy for moksha. Means, prepares me for moksha. Got it? Yeah, okay. Har Prasad. Uh, Prasad, uh, go ahead, Prasad. Yeah. Prasad Gurujala. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the moksha padam in Telugu, when it referred actually in the context, it also leads to a, it's a path leading to moksha also. That's the meaning comes in Telugu, as we understand moksha padam. Um, my yeah. question is on, uh, so the katrutvam, uh, so giving up katrutvam is uh, in, in uh, uh, karma yoga. Is based on the understanding that um, karta is atma and that atma is not the karta. Right? So I understood that already. So, which means that, so at this point, uh, the moment I understand who am I, I am liberated. So, karma yoga is actually leading me to the liberation, but jnana is required, right? In addition to that. So, it has to be uh, because the final thing is jnana only can take out the ignorance. Um, so the meaning at this point, uh, around 50, I mean, 40, 50 uh, sloka itself, it is giving the understanding of that. Correct. <clears throat> so the question is this. I am not a karta. And uh, doership, karta is I, but I am not a karta. So that knowledge is there. So Prasad is saying, and therefore, moksha is gained. By this time itself, one can gain moksha, he is saying. Yeah. So, of course, the, the teaching is tatatvam asi. So, that, that completes the teaching. Because the Ishwara has to be analyzed, and the world has to be analyzed, and the jiva is analyzed. And then, finally, the statement that everything in this world is, is Brahma, and that Brahma is 
me not different from me like that 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 teaching is there yeah that that that's the result of moksha but yeah we can never say we we are already any time moksha is is obtained but here what krishna is saying is that karma yoga leads you to moksha karma yoga is important is so important then only that moksha padam can be gained because the vision of ishvara is important knowing that i am akarta is not enough because then who am i or what is my relationship to the world what is my relationship to ishvara all these questions will arise and those also have to be clearly understood yeah prasad thank you yeah okay har prasad go ahead jay kumar are we going to do anything for uh, ganapati festival yeah so i had that in mind and so we can just like we we did a prayer on uh, janmashtami yeah mm-hmm. so we'll do something similar for ganapati when is our, our dear ganapati is there so what is it saturday i think is it not saturday yeah so we will uh, let me look at my schedule and then uh, okay. if we can meet uh, uh, on that day <clears throat> so saturday means saturday morning ist indian standard time let me look at the schedule but let me see a quick show of hands how many of you can meet for a for a prarthana doing archana puja etc on the morning of uh, saturday morning which is friday night us yeah so some of you are able to join okay good so let me see what it is either it's uh, it can be saturday morning or it can be sunday morning uh, but will i will try to keep it on saturday morning. okay thank you okay so we will uh, let me think through that okay para prasad okay. thanks so narayanan ji go ahead namaste guru ji ha yeah, meera ji how are you <laughs> i'm fine mm. so i just uh, wanted to ask regarding moksha so what i understand uh, is like it is not an experience um it's a, neither the process uh, it is not a state then what exactly differentiates the moksha from uh, you know logical understanding and assimilation what exactly is the difference where is that uh, line where you understand that it's not a um, uh, explanation what you try to keep telling yourself with through words or it's an experience uh, it's a state uh, what is the difference um, when you say moksha what is that exactly which you know yeah. differentiates yeah so uh, so it talks about knowledge versus moksha versus experience so one one thing is that we are we are used to experiential ananda so whenever we say happiness we mean a happy experience this is a, this is our this is our idea of happiness and so we constantly seek those happy experiences experiences which give us pleasure situations that that are pleasant this is what we constantly seek and uh, but so but, but then the statement the thesis of the bhagavad gita is that ananda is really you it says and so that is what gives you this happy experiences and uh, if you are hooked on to experiences then that experience can turn sad any time so therefore that happy experience while we all seek it cannot be moksha and so that moksha so negating of knowledge of atma okay so shastra's thesis is that i am confused about myself i don't know myself and you must know yourself in order to gain moksha so so the question is what happens if i gain knowledge okay so arjuna is going to ask that question later in this chapter itself it's just a few more verses are left sita pragnesya ka bhasha so arjuna has the same question slightly differently is asking he is asking uh, uh, this person who gains the knowledge 
how does he speak how does he walk no does it like does his language change you know what like that like that he's asking and uh, so krishna is going to answer that question but here the answer is knowledge itself liberates like the knowledge of the rope snake and once the knowledge is there that this is not a snake this is a rope the uh, the entire pursuit of running away from the snake the fear of the snake anxiety fear born anxiety fear is not enough fear born anxiety anxiety born palpitations we should add all these things <laughs> all these things right look at that starting from an error one error look at what all it can do correct the entire drama samsara is caused by that one error like that the shastram says so so yeah the answer can be said in many ways and uh, but but the final answer is once the knowledge is there you are no longer confused and so the the, the fear is gone completely fear is gone If somebody says how can fear be gone completely this is the only way because i am not the body i can be afraid that the body is not well but body is not well for various reasons but i am not the body therefore where can there be anxiety the knee jerk reaction can be there but but that is not anxiety won't be there that is what uh, krishna will also say a few more things on that topic in just a few more classes okay thank you yeah sri vidya go ahead uh guruji uh if uh, as as it says that uh, the karta and the bhukta uh, are not me uh, here so when when someone starts to learn all these things uh, karma yogi uh, karma yogi or uh, he is in the he is in the process of doing this so will not be a step a stopping point if I, if i am not the bhukta why should i do this uh will it not uh, uh, stop him uh, from uh, continuing the sadhana yeah so there can be two questions actually which is that if if i am an akarta if i am an abhokta means i as an atma then okay then there is uh, there is nothing to do that that conclusion can be there um and so that the krishna already refuted right there in verse number 47 that just because you are not a karta it doesn't mean doesn't mean you give up your duties okay duties have to be done and uh, so that part we covered already and second thing can be that uh, i am akarta so there is something called samanya gnanam and vishesha gyan i know that e is equal to mc square correct this is the grand equation energy mass equation e is equal to mc square i know that if somebody were to ask me is e e is equal to mc cube or mc or what they say i will say e is equal to mc square but if somebody asks me explain that equation to me then i have a serious i'll, I'll end up in a soup <laughs> because <laughs> i hardly know e is equal to energy m is equal to mass what is c i'm scratching my head okay and i've seen too many billboards advertisements and uh, e is equal to mc square and all that and so that's all i know i don't even know what c is so then now what is the problem there hey the statement is there i have the general idea about the statement but i really fully do not understand what it is and the full benefit of the knowledge is not there because i don't have the full knowledge the full benefit of the knowledge is also not there so therefore that is why one must do the duties are never to be given up 
in fact even after that vishesha gnanam vishesha gnanam means what the full idea of is is equal to mc square i know so well that i can i can talk about it until then i cannot talk about it correct so therefore um, therefore there is no question of abandoning one's duties or sadhana you use the word sadhana so there is no question of that because because of sadhana only you can learn it just because i read a statement e is equal to mc, mc square does not mean i know what it is okay i know just generally i know i have a general idea but i don't have the details i really don't know that is the meaning right but uh, in chapter 2 uh, itself he is telling that uh, you are not the karta you are not the mukta will it not uh, uh, have uh, arjuna should have felt something that uh, wh- then why am, am i doing all these things in this at this point okay. so that feeling can be there and uh, the other way to look at it is because you are not a karta what you do really will not bind you you are saying i am going to arjuna you said you are going to go to hell when you do all this because you are going to give create massive destruction no you will actually end up in in swarga first that is the first mistake you made is there second mistake is if you have the karma yoga buddhi none of these actions will bind you bhagavan also is helpless he can't give you he can neither give you punyam nor give you papam also that is so, the power but, yeah so should we take take it as a, that's why he is going on uh, asking questions and bhagavan is answering him or giving all these things correct 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 questions are there because something is to be understood questions will constantly be there yeah Thanks. good yeah three vidya so vidya yes take more ji so this uh, the question is in the verse 51 so uh, so it is giving up the results of action um now you had said in the in the discourse that it giving up the anxiety so the results of action right phalam tyaktva yeah so uh, the question vaidya's question is phalam tyaktva that word is it's a very very obvious meaning there is having given up the results of actions karma jam phalam tyaktva results born of action that's what krishna is saying here well i said anxieties but it actually implies the results of actions are also given up how it's given up because the results do, did not are, are not created by me i can only own things that i am i am the author of i can i can give you this book this is my book why they are please this is my gift to you i can say i wrote a book recently i published it and uh, then i then the question of giving up and all may be there i mean if that book belongs to me that cannot be given up okay, because i am the author of the book but here the phalam i am not the author of phalam ma karma phala hetur bhuhu but i have taken myself to be to be this and that to be the creator of these results and so phalam tyaktva there also correct you give up the results by understanding that you are not the author of the results so that same knowledge which gave me samatva buddhi also makes me give up the results give up the results means what i know i am not the author of the results i know clearly i am not the author so that karma yoga buddhya phalam tyaktva so that's what is being said here uh, by there now is it also the same idea that is in the previous verse which is giving yeah. up punya and papa like in the previous verse the punya and papa are also results of action so punya the, the previous verse punyam and papam uh, even though they are results it is meant in the sense of moksha so here when i give up as a karma yogi i give up the results of action means i have the samatva buddhi and so that attitude is predominant and i'm still in the process of knowing okay still in the process of knowing okay. so that's why he says phalam tyaktva so 
so you can say the karma yogi also is given up is giving up the results of actions and completely given up only by knowledge and in the previous shloka sukrute dush uh, dushkrute sukrute dushkrute uh, sukrute dushkrute yeah. ube jahati like that it said so there um, the wise person only the wise person can completely give up punyam and papa otherwise the kartritvam is there punyam and papa cannot be given up so what is the previous shloka what does it say buddhi yo jahati ha ube sukrute dushkrute tasmad yoga ya yujyasva yeah so there that's why shankara comes and he intervenes uh, and he says buddhi yukta ha then kramena and antakarana shuddhya moksha prapti dwara jahati he adds those things so mm. so only the gnanam can relieve the person from punyam and papa and so there the moksha pada is highlighted here also you can take it palam tyaktva means manishinah also is said correct mm, yeah that's Vaisa right that's said so you can attach the palam tyakta to manishi the knowledgeable person the jnani completely gives up the results and therefore frees the person to do what is to be done to do what is to be done at any moment yeah the good good uh, point of clarification there yeah. does that help vaidya thank you yes it does thank you yeah okay all right so there are no other questions uh... no i have a question oh, yeah vijay go ahead uh, um guruji i have heard or read somewhere that the first step is to uh, kind of understand the mind because um, a lot of these things are like once you quieten the mind probably then that realization of uh, you know understanding about atma becomes more clearer so a uh, beautiful quote that i remember is a mind that is not uh, flattered or shattered uh, that state is moksha Uh, how do you relate to that yeah <clears throat> so what is this the, there is the idea popular idea of calming the mind quieting the mind so what is the connection between that and moksha okay so quieting the mind itself cannot be moksha based on what we studied why quieting the mind alone cannot be moksha why is that mind vijay is going to answer the question vijay let's see sorry so why quieting of the mind cannot be moksha that is the question i'm asking you. yeah that is probably the first step uh, before we good. can uh, good so that's the first step it's not the end why it's not the end because we have diagnosed the problem <laughs> we have diagnosed the problem already what is the diagnosis diagnosis is that i have committed a mistake by taking this body to be atma so i project all problems of the body to be myself to be atma's problems that is the diagnosis and therefore what is the solution of the diagnosis the mistake has to be corrected mistake can be corrected only by knowledge no amount of calming the mind can correct the mistake therefore what you said is that first step may not even be the first step it may be the second or third step because calming the mind is not easy not easy <laughs> calming the mind is not easy. he is going to ask arjuna is going to ask that question no. he is going to he is going to ask he is going to say krishna this mind is running all over <laughs> he is going to ask that question and krishna calms him down yeah that's the way the mind is don't worry like that he says so yeah so first step is calming the mind and then then we the, the teaching is more readily assimilable uh, by this that mind good prasad you have a question i think another question uh, so i just want to confirm my understanding uh, this swadharma is uh, the 
inclusion of uh, varna dharma ashrama dharma varna ashrama and uh, vishesha and uh, samanya dharma so all that put together i can say that it's uh, so dharma correct that all it? that put together is so dharma correct okay correct so dharma so it's a simple that's why the word is a short word so dharma right but uh, it covers a lot it covers a lot ashrama dharma varna dharma primarily and then the dharma itself implies interpretation vishesha dharma and there is no rule book that i can look up to decide what i should do because things are unfolding constantly and we have to interpret dharma and the samanya dharma is the rule book satyam vada dharmam chara that's all the shastram says and uh, interpretation is left to us and uh, so yeah all of that is included in swadharma thank you okay good so we will pause with that नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धन्वे अमृतकलसहस्तायमय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथय श्री महाविष्णवे नम ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धन्वे अमृतकलसहस्तायमय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथय श्री महाविष्णवे नम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धन्वे अमृतकलसहस्तायमय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथय श्री महाविष्णवे नम